Welcome to the reading section 8-4, Behavior of Gases. This section has some new and unfamiliar stuff in it, but we start with the very familiar, which is the concept of air pressure. You probably realize that around the Earth, in a perfect blanket, is a layer of gases that we call air. These gases are attracted to the Earth by Earth's gravity, and the further away you get from the surf surface of the Earth, the less gravity there is. And so as you get further and further from the Earth, you see that there's less and less atmosphere. So this layer of gas that's laying over the top of everything actually exerts a lot of pressure on the Earth and on all the objects on the Earth, including us. And that's because gases are fast-moving particles that move in random, random directions, which means they're constantly colliding with whatever they come in contact with. And these billions of colliding particles actually press against everything they come in contact with. Let's say you're in New Jersey like we are. We are at sea level, so we're pretty much um, on the surface of the Earth. And we are standing under a column of air at any given moment that looks kind of like this. As you go further and further from the surface of the Earth, gravity lessens, and so you get fewer and fewer particles. You also have a pancake effect of all the particles underneath are being pushed by the ones above it. But it's mostly that gravity that makes it uh, shake out like this. As you go up higher and higher on the Earth's surface, you begin to feel as though you are not able to breathe as well, and that's because there's literally less oxygen up in the higher reaches of our atmosphere, which is why airplanes have to be specially pressurized, and that's why they have oxygen masks and things just in case they lose the pressure in the cabin so that you'll still be able to breathe. It also explains why when I took a trip to Colorado with my husband, the two of us had a really, really hard time breathing as we walked further and further up this one mountain. In fact, it got to the point where we were getting so little oxygen to our brains that we started to feel like we might be drunk, even though we hadn't had anything to drink. And we started to feel like, you know what, we need to turn around and go back the other way because we could just totally wipe out up here So, because we were that dopey. So we turned around and went back. So you can see that this column of air above you is significant. It's, it's huge. You don't think it is, though, because you've been walking around in it your whole lives. But if you were standing here, like I said, at sea level, let's say we're right here, Taller than all the buildings were amazing. Okay, so there we are. All of that air on top of us is the equivalent of about 32 feet of water over our heads. Now think about that. A lot of people, when they go down even to the bottom of a pool, which typically is no more than 12 feet, experience some pressure or pain in their ears. And if you go much deeper than that, you will definitely start to feel as though something's pressing on your eardrum. And what's pressing on it is actually the uh, particles of air that are trapped in here, pushing against your ear and being uh, overcome by the particles of air on this side. This might happen to you on an airplane also because of the pressure changes. So you don't realize it, but you're, you're experiencing quite a lot of pressure, equal to, like I say, 32 feet of water above your head. Most of the time you don't notice it though. We can measure pressure using a device called a barometer. Barometers um, use a lot of different units but basically they all work the same way. They have some reservoir of a liquid, usually mercury, and that reservoir, which is down here in the bottom, is affected by the pressure of the air above it. The more air is pressing down, the more the mercury is pushed up the tube. It's really that simple. So as the air pressure changes, the height of the mercury in the tube changes. Now, here are some units of pressure that come up in the reading packet. They talk about the Pascal, which is named after a scientist. The PASCAL, abbreviated capital P-A, is the Système International Unit, the International System of Units uh, Unit, the scientific unit for pressure. One PASCAL of pressure is the force of one Newton on acting on one square meter. See, pressure is calculated by taking the force and dividing by the area. So pressure is a measure of how much force per unit of area. So the more area something is covering, the more spread out the force is and the lower the pressure is. So you notice this if you've ever um, thought about this problem. Imagine that you are laying on the ground and someone's going to step on you. Do you want them to step on you with their high heel or do you want them to step on you with their sneaker? 
probably with their sneaker because that high heel has the same amount of force coming down because it's the same person, let's assume, and they have the same amount of weight, but it's covering a much, much smaller area. So the pressure from that heel is enough to puncture you. Whereas when it's spread out with the bottom of your sneaker, not so much. So you can measure pressure in pascals, but usually we do it in kilo pascals. Kilo meaning a thousand. So at atmospheric, I'm sorry, at sea level, atmospheric pressure here in New Jersey is usually around 101.3 kPa, kilo pascals. So that's what we call normal or standard pressure. The pressure, the normal pressure at sea level, which is what a column of air is normally doing just about where we are. But how much pressure is that really? Well, according to the reading packet, this 101.3 kilopascals of pressure is the equivalent of 100,000 newtons pushing down on each square meter of the Earth. In other words, it's like every square meter on the ground has a very large truck of pressure sitting on top of it, but you're completely used to it. Also in this chapter is a law called Boyle's Law, also named after a scientist. Mr. Boyle realized that if you change the amount of space you give a gas, that will increase the pressure if you decrease the, the volume. And you can see why. It's because if you decrease the amount of space the gas has to move around in, keep the temperature the same so the particles are moving at the same speed, well then they're going to collide more often with the walls of the container because there's less distance to cover, and as a result there's going to be increased pressure. You kind of instinctively know this. If you want to pop a balloon, you squeeze it, right? What are you doing? You're making the volume less and less so that that gas has less room to move around in, and therefore it increases the pressure. So Boyle's Law is pretty simple. Don't forget to add this little bit, though, that temperature has to stay the same because all bets are off if we also change the temperature. Because remember, if you change the temperature, we're going to get thermal expansion. So that'll mess everything up. So the temperature stays the same during Boyle's Law. Now, just want to point out here that the word law in science refers to a description of an important observation. That's how you get the title law. All we do with a law is describe what we see happening, and this is what Boyle saw. He saw that when he decreased the volume, he increased the pressure of a gas. That's different than a theory, like the kinetic molecular theory is a theory because it tries to explain why we get what we get when we see Boyle's law, and that explanation is a explanation of the black box, because we can't actually see these particles. We're just sort of theorizing that they exist based on the fact that we observe Boyle's law. There's another law that's similar that relates to temperature. And here we have Charles's law, which says that the volume of a gas increases with increased temperature, assuming we keep the pressure the same. So pressure has to stay the same in this example. And the way we keep the pressure the same is by allowing the container to have an expandable wall. And we make that with what's called a piston. A lot of problems on tests and quizzes will involve pistons, so you should learn what a piston is. A piston is one of these movable pieces in a cylinder that slides back and forth. So this piston can move up and down. So as we increase the temperature of the gas, the particles speed up, they move faster, they bump into each other more, they press on that piston, and in order for the pressure to stay the same, they've got to be expanding the, the volume of the container so that they have you know, enough room to move around for the amount of energy they now have. And that's really what Charles's law shows us. It shows us that if we have an expandable container, the pressure will cause a volume change. As the pressure builds up, it pushes that piston up and increases the volume of the gas. So Charles's law and Boyle's law kind of go together. They're related to each other. The overall concept is that pressure, volume, and temperature are all related in a gas. If you change one, you're basically changing the other two, or at least one of the other ones. And that's pretty much it for section 8-4. There is a section 8-5, which we will get to, which talks about the behavior of fluids. And the word fluid refers to not just gases, but also, also liquids, anything that can flow. And so we'll be adding some laws to the two that we covered here. So it's really important that you get Charles and Boyles down now so that you're not confused when we add a whole bunch of other things that are also called laws. 
And it's also really important that you realize that both Boyle's Law and Charles's Law are explainable through the kinetic theory of matter. So it's explained, we can explain Charles's Law and Boyle's Law, these two observations, by the fact that we believe that matter is made of particles and that those particles move faster with increased temperature. If we didn't believe that, it would be really hard to explain Boyle's and Charles's Law. What would be causing those changes? What would be causing those observations? We'd have no other explanation. And that's it for the reading packet. I hope you uh, got something out of it, either by watching these tutorials, doing the actual reading, or a combination of the two. And I will see you guys in class.